Hello everyone. So for this use case, uh, what we're going to talk about today is how to take data from Spotfire and send it back to the data source from which you got it from in the first place. Uh, as far as pulling data from Spotfire, that's a fairly straightforward process and a couple other videos that I have that cover these kind of ideas. But the question that tends to come up is I've now taken my data in I've made a decision based off of it. How do I take that data and turn it back around to send to a database for other purposes? So in this business use case, let's look at it this way. Let's say I was the sales manager for one of my particular regions, uh, let's say the Northwest, and I noticed that the sales in the Northwest are very low. Uh, if I drill down into that, I can notice that the product B sales are extremely low in this individual case. Now, in Spotfire, we do have our own collaboration tool that allows you to chat and be able to message other users within the platform, but if you want to track these on some sort of database level or you just need some other reason to be able to push data back, I could go in, for example, and make my own comment such as sales for product B low in Northwest. Now. I have that message, I'm going to go ahead and write that back to that individual database. In this case, my SQL server, you'll notice here that I write back to a person's table, so when I re-execute the query, you'll actually see that comment was written directly into the database from Spotfire. So, how did I actually go about doing that from start to finish? There's three different steps. The first step is to define the stored procedure in SQL. The second step is going to be connecting to that procedure in Spotfire. And the third step is going to be using a script like the one that I did to actually capture that information and send it to that database. So let's go to that first step. In this case, you can see here that I have a stored procedure that if I modify is very simple. All I'm doing is just inserting one row or a set of rows into the person table. Now you'll notice here that there is a select statement at the end. This is fairly important for later. Um, due to some workarounds that you need to do with the Spotfire tool. Now to make things easier you can just say select the first row from persons and that will actually do the same trick. So going back to Spotfire, now that I have a stored procedure, all I need to do is be able to connect to that stored procedure. Now in order to do this in the Spotfire realms, you have Spotfire Cloud and you have Spotfire Server. If you have Spotfire Server, you would go through this process by using an information link and um, some Iron Python. Now, if you are a Spotfire Cloud user, uh, we don't have access to information links, so what we would do in that case is utilize TIPCO Cloud integration and an R script to achieve the exact same thing. So the process would be similar but what we're only going to cover today is how it's done in the Spotfire server version. So in the information designer, there's two objects that you need to create. First, once you've connected to a data source, in this case, my write back test, I have that loaded. And if you don't have that done, all you need to do is set up a data source. You do that connection you'll have that table there available for you. Now a procedure can be clicked by just clicking the procedure button here um, and all you would need to do is it's going to show okay which actual procedure are you going to fit to in this case you're just gonna open up your database that you're using and find that individual procedure and you would just click select now procedure type the default is pre now we cannot use pre or post in this particular example it has to be a query and the reason why and this goes back to what i was saying in that stored procedure code is that you need the result column table 
Now the result column table is basically saying, hey, as an information link, we actually have to bring data back. That's what the point of an information link is meant to do. So you can actually cr just click the include all results column and we'll cover how that's negated later. Now in this case, you'll see here two things that are important. One, once you select your procedure, all of your parameters are automatically going to pop up. Now, what you need to add is a default value. Basically, you need to give every parameter an individual value name and put a question mark before it. That way, you can actually parameterize the information that's being sent to the information designer. So once you've created this procedure, all you need to do is create an information link that calls this procedure. Very similar to how we created the procedure, you would just click Create Information Link, like the one I have here. You would select the procedure resource and you would add that resource in here. Now, as far as anything else that you need to add, you want to make sure that the parameters are showing up in this individual value. They should automatically show up if you put question marks in the procedure itself. So as long as you have the question mark and the parameter name, all of those are going to show up in that value. Once you've confirmed that, you now have the information link working to help you write data back to the database. So in the last step, we now need to create the script that captures the data. Now, the biggest question I get is, well, what if instead of writing a comment, I want to be able to add a column to an individual data table? Or what if I just want to take a subset of data, marked data, maybe if I'm looking for outliers, and just have an outlier table that I write to? Now, in the code itself, the Iron Python script, that's where you're going to edit all of that. And of course, we have a lot of resources available on the TIPCO community site that can help you make that happen. So in this case, when I look at the script that I've done, and to maximize it to make it easier to see, all I'm doing is referencing an individual information ID, which is the ID of the information link. Uh, you get that by right-clicking on the information link in the information designer, and there is a selector called get ID. Um, this example code, which I'll include in my YouTube video comments, is basically saying, hey, we have our ID, we've referenced it. I am taking the parameters and I'm in appending it to that individual information link. And once you've done that, that's going to say, okay, for every object, we're going to take that value and add it in. And you can actually do this on a recurring basis. If you have multiple rows you want to add, you would just have a for loop in this individual case. Now, the last part is the most important part. The information link will not execute unless a data table is added. And that goes back to all the steps we've taken so far as the select table being in the stored procedure. So all we're doing is creating that data table using the information link, and then we're removing it right after. So one important thing, do not use a name for the data table that you already are using. Otherwise, you're going to delete that data. So very important um, just to use that as an individual example. And last but not least, you need to make sure in this case we're referencing a parameter. So you want to add that in the script parameter here. And I'll show you how that's done. You just go to add. You would say it's a string or whatever value you're choosing. And I'm referencing the property control in this case. But of course, if you're getting that data from a data table or any other piece, this would be done a little differently but I'm only pointing to just that individual property control and creating it from there. So these are the overall steps. Um, I will include some links that have some very helpful code examples that may be relevant to this use case or similar use cases below and of course any of the code that I've shown or if I can get the DXP file into YouTube I will do that as well. With that, thank you for listening today.